I'd like to welcome international speaker, author, and strategist Bob Tapscott to the show. Bob has keynoted conferences on artificial intelligence, fintech, and blockchain. He recently launched a book called Trivergence, Accelerating Innovation with Artificial Intelligence, Blockchain, and the Internet of Things. Bob Tascott, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great having you as our expert in artificial intelligence. Uh, obviously, something that many people have uh, gotten a little bit more familiar with over the past, uh, let's call it many months now. I guess Chat GPT, when that came into our uh, our lives, uh, Microsoft bringing it to our life a little while ago. It looks like uh, that's when people really started to jump on the AI bandwagon. And so uh, what is artificial intelligence? How does artificial intelligence affect the way we live today, affect the way we do business? How do you see it affecting our lives in general in the future? Well, if we can go back a bit, artificial intelligence may be new to the consumer marketplace, but there have been attempts to get a computer to think like humans are going back to the 1940s. The one that's rocking the world is based on how neural networks in the brain actually function. It was first envisioned way back in the 1940s, and it has been tried and failed and tried and failed for many, many decades. However, at the beginning of this century, three professors from various universities uh, found a way to make them smarter. What also happened was a revolution in hardware architecture based uh, originally on graphics card, then it funded heavily by Bitcoin mining, in which you have a massive array of GPUs performing a particular function that can be performed in parallel, what was a great architecture for graphics and a great architecture for mining Bitcoin is also a perfect architecture for neural networks and artificial intelligence. So historically, the speed of computers was predicted, if not limited, by Moore's law, which said that the number of transistors on a chip doubled about every two years. But what happened, what typically in a decade was a thousand-fold increase in throughput, and the last decade has been a million-fold increase in throughput. So suddenly, we have a new architecture, which has sped up computers by an order of magnitude, not one order of magnitude, six orders of magnitude. You've got new approaches as a result of those three professors. And from the Internet of Things, you have a ton of data on which the new approaches to artificial intelligence can thrive. How would you say it is already affecting just the average person in their day-to-day -day life? Well, I think for this decade, you're going to see is you're going to see AI become, you know, a friend, an associate, a helper in terms of any conceivable job you have, from creating music to scientific research to medicine to uh, writing an essay, it's going to be very helpful. And I think in three or four years, everyone is going to have AI on their desk. Through that process, it's going to gain a heck of a lot more data. And we're going to see in the 2030s, the ability of um, AI to move off of your desk and fundamentally into your chair. If I wanted to think about artificial intelligence and, 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 and all the things that we hear that it's going to do, is it just going to one day just pop up uh, at the office and all of a sudden your, your search engine or your uh, certain functions in the office will be a lot different, uh, a lot quicker and more efficient? I think you're going to find that it's employed in corporations on a massive scale and very quickly. So depending on what you do, I mean, if you write a book, it can generate a framework for that book. If your job is in terms of customer service, as, as you've seen with these chatbots, is that almost every company has a AI chatbot before you can get to a human being. And once again, that chatbot is as good as the amount of data that it has. So companies that have a history of um, all the data associated with chatbots with people have a distinct advantage in terms of coming up one, with one that's AI-based that is as good as and soon better than uh, humans will be. I guess the AI itself is as good as whatever it's programmed or whatever information is programmed into it. And I guess over time, is it fair to say that these computers or chips or whatever we're, we're, we're talking about learns from, I guess, the information that I guess a human will program it with or for? They are programmed, certainly, but they derive their logic 
not from if then else statements, traditionally as have computer systems, they derive their intelligence from data. And in some ways um, that makes them um, infinitely more powerful. So for instance, you know, chat GPT-4 is uh, referenced or is assumed or guessed to have trillions of data points. And where it's got its data was from reading the New York Times, um, any book it could read online, probably including my book, um, and everything that has been digitized. And so uh, the good news, it has that vast experiential database. And the bad news is there are things on the internet that are not true. So um, in some ways, it's going to come to the right conclusions a certain percent of the time, and it's definitely going to come to the wrong conclusions another percentage of the time. Obviously, we're a financial show. We try to bring financial information to investors uh, every few weeks. If you were to put on your investment hat, what would you say would be the better way to invest in artificial intelligence? Would you be more inclined to be investing in an NVIDIA, which we all know as the the, the, the big company that uh, I guess is, is creating the chips, or maybe even an AMD, which is perhaps an up and coming challenger, or would you be more inclined to invest in Meta or Microsoft or Alphabet, uh, companies that are going to be using chips to better their, uh, I guess, their services. What would you say would be the better investment? One of the things that's occurred in uh, technology, and it's occurred for 50 years, is in the beginning, uh, WordPerfect was better than Word, and uh, Lotus123 was better than Excel. But eventually what happened is then in a department, uh, people standardized on a particular product and then it happened within a company and then it happened within the industry and then it happened within the world and because uh he who has the largest and best database has the most intelligent ai system uh, i suspect that they will get more customers and they will get more data and become an even more intelligent system so the tend towards consolidation and ending up with few players in AI seems like an inevitability. So in terms of hardware, that's the shovels of Bitcoin mining and it's the shovels underneath AI. So I think those are reasonably safe bets. And in terms of software companies, uh, the big players um, uh, are the only ones that can afford to have systems that literally can scrape the entire internet. So there are definitely winners there. And the other winners in which I think you're gonna see some phenomenal results are companies that employ these new techniques on a very limited area, be it in uh, medicine or be it in uh, driving or be it in wherever, that with a limited amount of data uh, without the massive CPU complexes that, say, Google has, are able to come up with a groundbreaking application. I thought we'd end off our, our interview um, talking a bit about your book, uh, Trivergence, uh, uh, Accelerating Innovation with AI, Blockchain, and the Internet of Things. So I guess just tell us, who's this book for and, and uh, what are you attempting to answer uh, when, you, when you made the book? I wanted to explain that the three forces that are triverging uh, to mean that the explosive power uh, that they're unleashing is happening now. And it's coming at us, say, much faster than the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the transformation is going to be profound. So I wanted to accomplish a couple of different things. One is explain why now, why it's going to happen so quickly, and why I'd say in a 10 or 12 year period is everything from medical research to education to work is going to be radically transformed. So I wanted to a explain that that's going to happen and put a framework in place in terms of how we as a society may adapt to this. And what I also hope to do was that like every transformation, every major disruption, they're going to be people who hold on to the old paradigms and uh, get obsolesced in the process. And they're going to be people who understand 
the potential of these new technologies are going to be able to uh, ride this very large wave. And I was hoping that this book would position people to be in the latter category. Well, uh, I think uh, it's uh, going to be, a, well, it is a very informative uh, uh, book, I think, for those that would like to read it. Uh, obviously, you have a tremendous amount of experience in the area. And uh, Bob Tapscott, I want to thank you today for, for joining us and shedding some light on this, I guess, opening box called artificial intelligence. I don't want to say a black box because we're learning more and more about it. The average person walking the street is asking me more and more about how they can invest in the area of artificial intelligence. And I think we've given everybody a nice little glimpse as to what and how what it is and how powerful it's going to be in the years to come and how it's going to revolutionize the way we live. So, uh, Bob, thank you again for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you. My treat. Thank you so much. Thank you.